In this screencast, we will discuss the normal features of the small bowel. At the end of this podcast, you should be able to identify and describe the normal location and diameter of the jejunum, duodenum, and ilium, and compare and contrast the normal wall thickness and enhancement of the different segments of the small bowel. When we look at the small bowel, we break it up into three basic components. The duodenum or duodenum, which extends from the pylorus of the stomach to the ligament of trites. The next segment is the jejunum. The jejunum is outlined in bluish purple here. It extends from the ligament of trites and transitions into the ilium in the mid-abdomen. The transition from the jejunum to the ilium is not very discreet radiographically. And the jejunum is typically located in the upper abdomen, more to the left of midline, where the ilium tends to be located more in the lower abdomen to the right of midline. The ilium is the most distal segment of the small bowel, and it terminates at the ileocecal valve. When we look at the duodenum, it has a C-loop configuration. It can be divided into four sections. The first portion is often referred to as the duodenal bulb. It's a common location for inflammatory pathology, such as peptic ulcer disease. The first portion of the duodenum is, an, is intraperitoneal, and so ruptures of the first portion of the duodenum will result in free intraperitoneal gas. The second and third portions of the duodenum make up the C-loop and are retroperitoneal. In the second portion of the duodenum, the bile ducts empty into the duodenum through the ampulla of water. The third portion of the duodenum and the fourth portion of the duodenum are less frequently involved with pathology than the first and second portions of the duodenum. The fourth portion of the duodenum is also intraperitoneal like the first portion of the duodenum. Here we can see the stomach indicated by the blue arrow and the first portion of the duodenum or the duodenal bulb indicated by the orange arrow. As we move down, we can now see the second portion of the duodenum and the third portion of the duodenum in their retroperitoneal position, creating the C-loop. The pancreatic head fits in along the second and third portions of the duodenum, as it is also a retroperitoneal structure, and the common bile duct passes through the pancreatic head, joining with the pancreatic duct to empty through the ampulla vater into the second portion of the duodenum. You can commonly see a periampulary duodenal diverticulum impressing into the head of the pancreas. This is a common pathologic phenomenon, although it is rarely clinically significant. It can be mistaken for a pancreatic mass if there is not gas within it and it is fluid filled and heterogeneous appearing. The third portion of the duodenum sweeps under the superior mesenteric artery and then the fourth portion of the duodenum re-enters the peritoneal cavity. The ligament of trites is not readily identifiable on CT, but the bend from the fourth portion of the duodenum into the proximal jejunum roughly demarcates the ligament of trites, indicated by this blue arrow. When we're thinking about the jejunum, again, it is the more proximal part of the small bowel tends to be located to the left of midline in the upper abdomen relative to the ilium, which is located to the right of midline in the lower abdomen, although the configuration and location of the jejunum and ilium is highly variable. The jejunum is distinguished from the ilium based on its fold thickness. The jejunum can appear quite thick when it is decompressed, and this fold thickness or wall thickness can also make the jejunum appear hyperemic or hyperenhancing relative to the other portions of the small bowel. This is a pitfall that is most commonly encountered on MRE or CTE where people believe that the jejunum is abnormal because of its hyperenhancement relative to the rest of the bowel. The ilium 
is located in the right lower abdomen. It has a thinner wall than the jejunum due to decreased fold density. The ilium is the most common segment of bowel affected by pathology, and specifically the terminal ilium is commonly involved with pathology. The terminal ilium joins with the cecum at the ileocecal valve. The ileocecal valve can often be identified as a small fatty structure, sometimes shaped like an olive. When you're thinking about the normal diameter of the small bowel, fluid-filled small bowel loops should be 3 centimeters or less. Some people use a cutoff of 2.5 centimeters. When the bowel loops are not distended, they can appear to have wall thickening, as indicated by the yellow arrow. Here are also two examples of abnormal bowel. You can see air fluid levels in the first example of a mildly dilated loop of jejunum related to Crohn's disease. In the second example, a patient with cystic fibrosis who has distal intestinal obstruction syndrome has a dilated loop of jejunum with pseudofeces. When we think about the normal enhancement patterns of the small bowel, we want to see uniform circumferential enhancement. All of this bowel wall should have a similar attenuation, except for the jejunum, which often appears thicker and more hyperenhancing, again due to its fold density. Here we have three abnormal examples of bowel wall enhancement. The first example shows mural stratification. The mural stratification is due to submucosal edema causing a hypoattenuating appearance of the submucosa of the bowel wall relative to the mucosa and serosa. The second example is non-enhancing bowel wall which is also affected by pneumatosis in the setting of mesenteric ischemia. In mesenteric ischemia, the bowel wall often thins out and does not enhance. As the bowel dilates, the bowel wall may show progressive thinning until it is, quote, paper thin. You can also see eccentric thickening or solid enhancement of the bowel wall, as in the third example. This is an example of small bowel lymphoma, and you can see, as opposed to mural stratification, in this example, the bowel wall thickness is somewhat irregular or non-uniform, and it is solidly enhancing, as opposed to the hypoattenuating submucosal edema. Hopefully after this screencast, you can now identify the normal location and diameter of the various segments of the small bowel, and you can compare and contrast the normal wall thickness and enhancement of the different segments. In summary, the duodenum has a C-loop configuration with retroperitoneal second and third portion and intraperitoneal first and second portion. The jejunum has a high mucosal fold density that results in apparent thickening and hyperenhancement that should not be mistaken for abnormality. This is particularly true when the jejunum is not distended with fluid. The normal small bowel should be less than 3 cm in diameter, although some people use a cutoff of 2.5 cm. The wall should mildly enhance with uniform circumferential thickness. The thickness of the wall should be less than 3 mm when distended.